Double Entry Bookkeeping In this video tutorial we're going to work through a question called Mary. You should have a copy of the question in front of you. Copies of the question are available to download from the website. Also remember you can pause and rewind the video at any time. So getting started. We start up here in the top left hand side of the page. Mary started business on the 1st of March. The following is the list of transactions for the month of March. So here we have the transactions that we need to record. And what we're asked to do down here at the bottom, you are required to write up the above transactions in the books of Mary for the month of March, which means we'll enter those transactions into Mary's ledger accounts. And then part B, we'll balance off the accounts and we'll prepare a trial balance. So getting straight into it, if we look at the first transaction here, March the 1st. Start a business by lodging 65000 in the business bank account. So Mary is starting the business lodging 65000 So the money is coming from Mary, that's referred to as capital, and it's going into the bank account. So we need two accounts. We need a bank account, and we need a capital account. Money going into the bank, we put it on the debit side. So we have the date, March the 1st, description, capital, and the amount, 65,000. And that would be double entered onto the credit side of the capital account. So we put in March the 1st, bank, 65,000. Second transaction here, March the 2nd, bought computer equipment. So we need a ledger account for computer equipment for 20,000 paying by cheque. Paying by check implies the transaction went through the bank. So we need a bank account, which we already have. And we need to open up a new account for computer equipment. Now money is coming out of the bank. So we will be crediting the bank. March the 2nd, computer equipment, 20,000. And the double entry will be, we will debit the computer equipment account. March the 3rd. Purchase goods costing 12000 on credit from Allen. Purchase goods is a special account called purchases. These are goods that are for resale. On credit means no money changed hands, so we need an account for Allen. So the two ledger accounts we need are purchase account and Allen account. There's our purchases, there's our Allen. Now you always debit purchases, well nearly always. So we'll write in here on the debit side, March the 3rd, Allen. 12,000 and the double entry will be down on the credit side of Alan's account March the 3rd purchases 12,000 March the 4th bought a new delivery van so we need a new asset account from Marvelous Motors for 20,000 on credit so we need to have open up an account for Marvelous Motors so the new the two new accounts we need are delivery van account and Marvelous Motor accounts the delivery van is an asset a new debit assets, so we will write in on the debit side of the delivery van account, March the 4th, Marvelous Motors, 20,000, and we double enter that onto the credit side of Marvelous Motors account. So Marvelous Motors are creditors, hence we have the balance on the credit side. Purchase goods costing 2,000 paying by check, so purchase goods is a purchase account, we had that earlier, paying by check implies the bank. So the two accounts we need are the bank account and the purchase account. Now we already have both of those. If you look at the bank account you see there's two transactions on it, March the 1st and March the 2nd, and on the purchase account you have a transaction on March the 3rd. So money is coming out of the bank, so we're going to credit the bank account. March the 5th purchases 2000 and we will be debiting the purchases account, March the 5th, cross reference it to bank, 2000. March the 10th, sold goods for 8000 cash, sold goods is sales, and we need account for cash. So cash account and sales account, so these are two new accounts. Now we're selling goods, we are receiving cash, so money coming in, you always debit the account, so we debit the cash account, and we will credit the sales account. In fact, you'll always credit sales accounts. So on the sales account, on the credit side, we have March the 10th, cash, 8,000. 
March the 15th, purchased more goods from Allen on credit. So it's the purchases account and Allen account. Now we have both of those accounts. If you look and see you have a purchase account with two transactions on it and you have an Allen account with a transaction from March the 3rd. We're purchasing more goods. So what we do is we will debit the purchases. March the 15th, Allen 10,000. And we will be crediting Allen's account. March the 15th, purchases 10,000. March the 20th, sold 8,000 euro worth of goods on credit to Breda. So on credit means no money changed hands. So we need to open up an account for Breda. And we have a sales account. So we have a new account here for Breda. And we have the sales account. Now you always credit sales. So therefore we must be debiting Breda's account. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So on the debit side of Breda's account. I'll write in March the 20th, sales 8,000. And I'll double enter that into the credit side of the sales. March the 20th, Breda, 8,000. March the 24th, received a cheque, cheque implies bank, from Breda for 5,000. So the two accounts are bank and Breda. Now we have both those accounts. So if you look at your bank account, you can see you have three transactions on it. And Breda has one transaction on the debit side. Now we're receiving a cheque from Breda, so money going into the bank will go on the debit side. So March the 24th, Breda, 5,500. And the double entry of that will be on the credit side of Breda's account. March the 24th, bank, 5,500. March the 25th, paid telephone expenses of 350 by cheque. So we need an expense account. And by check implies bank. So you have a bank account. Have a bank account. And you need to open up a telephone expenses account. What we do here is we will. Debit the bank. A big word. Credit the bank with the money going out. And we debit. The telephone expenses account. Post the check. For 15,000 to MV Motors, so check implies bank and MV Motors. So we have the bank account and we've quite a few transactions on it now. And money coming out of the bank with credit, so there we have the MV Motors, Marvelous Motors. So we will credit the bank and we will debit the Marvelous Motors account. 15,000. Now the 28th, returned 500 euro worth of goods to Allen and received a credit note for the full amount. So we're sending goods back to Allen, so we need an account for Allen, and we're sending back goods that we purchased earlier. So what we need is a purchases returns account. So this is a new account that we have to open, and you have an Allen account already with two transactions on it. Now it's going to be a reversal, so therefore when you have purchases, you put it in the debit side. With purchases returns, the entry will be on the credit side. So we're going to put it in the credit side of the purchase returns account. March the 28th, Allen 500. And down on Allen's account, we will debit Allen's account. March the 28th, purchases returns 500. March the 29th, sent a check to Allen for 12,000. Check implies bank. And Allen account we already have. So therefore the two accounts we need are the bank account and Allen's account. Now we're sending a check to Allen so money's coming out of the bank. So we're going to credit the bank. March the 29th, Allen 12,000. And the double entry will be we will debit Allen's account. So March the 29th, bank, 12,000. Okay, that completes all the entries in the ledger accounts for the month of March. What we're now going to do is going to balance off the accounts. So we're going to go down to the accounts one by one and balance each account in turn. Even if there's only one transaction in the account, we will still balance it off. So starting off with the capital account. There is only one transaction in the capital account of 65,000, so what I'm going to write in here 
the total for this column here, and I'm going to write in here the same total. So I put 65,000 in the total of both those columns. Now, obviously, this side here doesn't add up to 65,000, so I'm going to put in a balancing figure. The balancing figure is 65,000. So I've March the 31st, balance carried down 65,000, and that would be brought down onto the other side, in other words, the credit side, for the 1st of April. The uh, next account we have is the bank account. Now, there are quite a number of uh, entries on the bank account, and what we need to do is identify which side is the largest side. So if we have a look at the debit side, we can see it would be 70,500. And if we look at the credit side, we can see, well, it's going to come to a lot less than the 70,500. So I'll put in here 70,500, and I'll also put in here 70,500. Now this side here, the credit side, doesn't add up to 70,500, 70, so I'm going to put in the balancing figure. So I'll have March the 31st, balance carried down, and the balancing figure, or the difference, is 21,150. So I'll take this balancing figure here and bring it down onto the other side, which is the debit side. So I have April the 1st, balance brought down, 21,150. Next account is the computer equipment. There's only a single transaction on this, so I'm going to put in 20,000 in here and 20,000 in here. There we go. And then I'll put the balancing figure over here, which of course is the 20,000. Now, this is the balance carry down. So I'll take this and I'll bring it down onto the debit side. So I'll have April the 1st, balance brought down 20,000. Next, we have purchases. And we have three transactions on the purchase account, all on the debit side. And we've just checked them there. We can see they come to 24,000. So I'll put in those totals there. 24,000 on both sides and of course this side here doesn't add up the 24,000 so we need to put in the balancing figure as before so the balance carried down will be brought down onto the other side the debit side so April the 1st balance brought down 24,000 Alan's account now good few transactions in Alan's account Alan is a creditor we bought 22,000 euro worth of goods from Alan we sent back 500 and paid him 12. So there's still a balance owing. So in this case, the credit side will be the bigger side. And the total there is 22,000. So I'll put 22,000 in on both sides. Now, we this side over here, the debit side, doesn't add up to 22,000. So I'll put in the difference. So March 31st, balance carried down 9,500. And then this figure will be brought down onto the other side, which is brought down onto the credit side. April the 1st, balance brought down 9,500. Now we have Marvel's Motors account. Now Marvel's Motors account, they're creditors as well. We bought the delivery van from them on credit and we paid them. Now we can see that the bigger side is the credit side and the total is 20,000. So I'll put those figures in there. And then I'll put the difference in here. This is the amount we still owe them. And the difference is 5,000. So March 31st, balance carried down 5,000. And we bring this over onto the credit side. And at April the 1st, balance brought down 5,000. Delivery van account is an asset account. Only one transaction on it. So I'll put in 20,000 into the column totals. And then over here, I'll get the balancing figure, which will be the 20,000. The 20,000 here will be brought down onto the other side, the debit side, for the 1st of April. So April the 1st, balance brought down 20,000. Cash account, again, only one transaction. So I'll put 8,000 in here and in here. And I'll get the balancing figure up here, which is 8,000. And it'll be brought down onto the debit side. Now we have the sales account. So there's two transactions on the credit side of the sales account. So we see the total is going to come to 16,000. So I'll put that in there. 
and then I'll put the balancing figure in here, which of course would be 16,000. So the balance carried down 16,000 on the debit side, so it gets brought down to the other side. So we have April the 1st, balance brought down 16,000 on the credit side. Our sales will always be on the credit side. Telephone expenses. Well, an expense account, the entries on the debit side. So there's only one transaction again, so I'm going to put in the total 350 into uh, each co column there. So the total of the debit 350, total of the credit 350, because it doesn't add up to 350. So we put in the balancing figure, balance carry down 350, and that'll be, that'll be brought down onto the debit side. April the 1st, balance brought down 350. We have a Breda account. Now, Breda, Breda was a debtor. We sold goods to Breda on credit. Breda owed us 20,000, you see from March the 20th. On the 24th, she paid us 5,500. The bigger side is the 8,000. So I put 8,000 in here as the column totals. And then in here, I get the balancing figure. So the balancing figure here on the credit side is 2,500. And we bring that down onto the debit side. So the balance on Breeders' account is April the 1st. Balance brought down 2,500. So Breed is a debtor. Remember, this is the debit side here. Breed is a debtor. So she still owes uh, 2,500. And then the purchase returns account. Only one transaction on this. So I'll put the total in here. 500 in each one of those. And then um, over here, this side doesn't add up to 500, so I put in the balancing figure. So 500 is the balance carried down, and that gets brought down onto the other side, onto the credit side. Now, that completes all the ledger accounts and the balancing off of the ledger accounts. What we're going to look at now is constructing the trial balance. The trial balance, we will set it up in what is referred to commonly as journal paper, where we'll have a space here we can write in a narrative, actually the name of the accounts, and we'll have two columns here, one a debit column and one a credit column. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the very first account that I had. and In my system here, my ledger accounts, the first ledger account that I opened up was the capital account. Now, if I go and check the balance on the capital account, I can see the balance on the capital account is 65,000 on the credit side. So that's the figure I am going to use. If I go back here, I'm going to write in here 65,000 on the credit side. Then I'll go to the bank and the bank figure will be 21,150. Got my computer equipment, just listing my accounts here, all the way down here. Allen, Marvis Motors, delivery van, cash, sales, Breda, telephone expenses, and purchase returns. So they're all the ledger accounts we should have. And as I already mentioned, the balance on the capital account will be 65,000. Now the bank account, I'll just actually go back and have a quick look at the bank account. Go here. We can see that the balance on the bank account is 21,150 on the debit side. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to slot it in here on the debit side, 21,150. Now I'll go back and look at my computer equipment. So if I just pop back and get that. We can see the balance on the computer equipment account Again on the debit side, and it's 20,000 on the debit side. So going back to my trial balance, I'll put in for the computer equipment 20,000 on the debit side. Likewise, I'll do the same for purchases. If I look at my purchases, I'll see the balance is 24,000. So I'll pop that in there. What you can do now is go down through all your accounts, put in the balances. On the appropriate side, either the debit side or the credit side, and when they're all in, we'll balance it off. So I'm just going to put the figures in now because you can pause this, put in your numbers, and come back then and check it. Alan is a creditor, 
So that goes on the credit side. And likewise, Marvelous Motors creditors, 5,000 on the credit side. The delivery van is an asset, so that would be on the debit side in there. Cash is an asset, likewise on the debit side. Sales are always on the credit side. So put those over there, 16,000. Brida is a debtor. She owes money, 22,500. The expenses, expenses always go on the debit side, so 350 won't go in there on the debit side. And the purchase returns, well, they go over on the credit side. Now what I'll do is I'll add up all the items on the debit side of the child balance, all the items on the credit side, and of course the total on the debit must equal the total on the credit. So if I put the figures in here, I get 96,000 on the debit side and 96,000 on the credit side. Okay, that completes the question. Thank you very much.